Hello dears. I wanted to do a short video for you because this whole self cocooning is, is kind of new and we're all a little bit anxious about it. And we have right here so many wonderful resources right here in our bodies and also in our homes. Um, so um, we had the idea, my friend and I, that we could do a short series using each of the different rooms of your home. So today's short series is meant to happen in your kitchen yoga studio. So um, find your way into the kitchen. You might set up <clears throat> your device somewhere eventually that it can rest on an oven because we're going to be using the stove. Um, so the first principle, really the only principle I want to share about today is the notion of the shashumna which is our central energetic column. If you were a tree, think of this as your heartwood. It's the essence, it's the nervous system that organizes intelligently. And in times of change, we can sometimes feel thrown off, but in fact, those changes are an opportunity to orient around the center. So we're going to start to do that right now by planting the feet right where you are in the kitchen, uh, pretty near your stove if you can be, hips a little bit wider than sitting bone distance with just a little bit of a bend, so there's a juiciness in the knees. And then we're going to place one hand on top of the tallest point of your head, and we're going to breathe in. Breathe into the heart, breathe into the belly, and as you exhale, push your head up into the hand as you reach the feet down into the ground. <sighs> Exhaling. Let's do that three more times. Breathing in, into the heart, into the belly. <sighs> Exhaling, feeling the core. Twice more. Breathing in. Exhaling. <sighs> Last one. Then allow your hands to drop. Let yourself exhale down. This central column roots by reaching down. So in the next couple poses, we'll be looking for that sense of the shishumna, the thing that brings us back to center. So now we're going to turn towards the oven. If your oven has a nice little handle, um, you can use that by taking your hands around it. You might just be using a countertop. Make sure there are no burners on. You can place the hands right onto it. And what we're going to do is basically take a variation of down dog and up dog. So I want you to be gentle with yourself as you walk back taking little um, old dancing man steps, like little easy steps to ease back. Your angle might look very different than mine, so you might be more like here, okay? So we're gonna start with the cat portion. So we're gonna start here, breathing into the heart and the belly, finding shishumna, and as you exhale, begin to round. <sighs> breathing out through the mouth. And then find yourself on the inhale, really elongating tailbone to sternum, looking up. And then we'll move on the exhale, leading with the tailbone all the way back, slowly, letting the legs bend whenever you need them to. And then we'll breathe in here and take that twice more, exhaling. Maybe the legs bend. We might shift the weight forward towards the hands. And then stay for a full breath in and exhale to move. So we're moving on the exhale. And again, feeling that shashumna, feeling the power at your own center. Pause here and breathe in. Again, maybe legs bend. Last one. Exhale, rounding, moving through and then staying for that breath and really broadening the collarbones. Fueling your own centeredness, exhaling. And now we're going to step that right foot forward. So you're using the hands to help you balance. And then we'll help ourselves into as tall a spine as we can find here. You might adjust a little bit closer if you want to feel 
your support closer to your midline. And then with the right leg forward, we'll take that left arm up on an inhale. And then we're going to make a descending ah sound as we exhale the hand out and down. Okay? So we're going to breathe in to our central spine. Ah. Twice more, just like that. Breathing in, rooting down through the legs. Ah. Last one. Breathing into the legs, into the heart and belly. And then we'll take both hands to the oven again, take a little walk back, and this time let one knee at a time bend quite a lot, just feeling into that. And then settling into your down dog to notice the effects of your pose, studying the response. Making any little adjustments you need to. And then stepping that left foot forward, maybe adjusting a little closer to your oven. And this time that right arm will reach up. Now finding your mountain pose through the legs, reaching down. Ah. Ah. Take both hands for one more. Down dog vinyasa, taking your time, stepping back again. You might be here, you might be here with bent legs. See which variation works best for you and absorb the pose. We're going to shift the left foot to the midline of the body and just take a nice reach back, lengthening through the right leg. Again, you might have leg bent and gently lower it back down, hips rocking side to side. And then we'll shift the right foot to the midline and reach. So you might not have as much space as I do here in this kitchen. And if that's the case, bend this leg, taking the sole of the foot to the sky. And then gently uncoil, finding down dog. And let's enjoy walking forward. So taking your time, curling through a little bit of a cat tilt. Feeling the ground underneath you. Easing back into mountain pose with the feet just as we began. Sitting bone distance a little bit wider. Little juicy bend. Hand to the top of the head. Breathing in to the heart and the belly. And <sighs> exhaling for length. Two more rounds. Last one. And then we'll bring this second hand to the heart and just conclude our kitchen yoga practice with a pause to dedicate these benefits deeply to our own innermost need and intention at this time. And may these benefits flow out in all directions to all sentient beings in all places and all times. We can close with a word in Sanskrit that means the light in me cherishes the light in you and a word in Yoruban which means Amen, may it be so, and that is Ashe. So, 
Namaste Ashe. Thanks, y'all.